DXF Importer Tutorial Number 2 Importing and Splitting Up a Large Drawing In the CarveWrite Designer software, go to File, Import, Import DXF File. The DXF Import software will then open a prompt that allows you to choose your file. Browse and locate the desired DXF file and select Open. If a message pops up saying, not all of the DXF file could be imported, it simply means that there are elements of the file that weren't supported in the importer. By clicking on the Details button, it will list the problems it found. In most cases, the unsupported elements are not part of the design, but invisible artifacts from the program the file was originally created in, such as groups or layers. This will only need to be looked at if parts of your design are not showing up in the importer. Select OK and the file opens in the importer. Check that all of your elements are present before proceeding. Once again, the file opens with all of the lines selected and highlighted in red. Click outside the design somewhere to deselect the lines, and the lines will turn blue. By clicking on the lines, we see that they are broken into small sections. This is part of how the DXF's file was created, but is not ideal for cutting. Before we address this, let's scale the design to the size we want to produce. Then in the Scaling tab here, let's increase the design size to 29 inches tall and press Enter. Now that we have the design scaled, let's move to the Auto Connect tab. In this tab we see a slider here with a threshold number box below. As we move the slider we see the threshold number change continuously. The threshold is referring to the distance between points we are wishing to join together. Since this design has the points very close together, we can reduce our threshold to a minimum amount and press the Auto Connect button. This will process for a moment while it does its work. Once finished, we'll click off the design again to deselect it, then select the lines again. We see how the lines are now continuous instead of being very small line segments. This will work much better for cutting. Let's move on and select the Board tab. When we select the entire design, we see that the total width is highlighted in yellow at 15 inches. We know the machine's width is only 14 and a half inches, so it's telling us that this design is too wide. Let's change that dimension to the 14 and a half, select Enter, and press the Add New Board button. The board appears on the screen behind the top part of the design. Move over to the Clone Selected Board button and press it. This adds another board, identical to the other one below it. Now the entire design is laid out on the two boards. Using the zoom tools again, zoom in to see where the design is split between the two boards. We want to move the design to a place where it will be easiest to seam back together after cutting. Select the design and move it appropriately. Once positioned, Let's move to the Shapes tab and select the Split Across Boards button. Now deselect the design and drag a box around just the bottom of the board. It will select separately from the top section. With the bottom geometry selected, move it up alongside the geometry on the top. The two groups of geometry can now be laid out on one board instead of two by simply increasing the length of the top board. We'll rotate the bottom geometry to better fit with the top geometry. Select the Rotate tool and rotate the lower section of the design 180 degrees. By holding down the control button on the keyboard, the rotate will snap to 15 degree intervals while rotating. We want to minimize board waste by getting these two sections as close together as possible. Now move back to the Boards tab and delete the selected board by pressing the Delete Board button. Now with just a single board, we need to change the dimensions of the top board to fit the design. Add to the length of the board until it encompasses the entire design. and add another 3.5 inches to either side so that it stays under rollers at all times. When done, select Finish. 
The design will now open in the project designer on the board size we specified. You'll notice that the imported design displays all of the points or nodes along the lines. There are so many of them that it makes the design a little difficult to see. We can turn all of these off in the view menu by selecting toggle control points and toggle non endpoints. Now only the endpoints are visible. In order to entirely cut out these shapes, we need to close them off as regions. Select the lines and with the line segment tool, connect them together. Next, select the outlines to cut. Choose the Cut Path tool. Make sure the 1 8 inch cutting bit is selected. Set your tabs and flip the cut to the outside of the line. Now select all the inner regions. Select the proper cutout settings for these regions as well and make sure to flip the cut path to the inside of the line. Adjust the positioning of the pieces if necessary, then save and upload the project to your card. <laughs>